Real Madrid against Manchester City, of course, will face off in the Champions League. The first leg will be on April the 9th. There was a lot of talk, wasn't there, about the possibility of Thibaut Courtois returning after that international break to start for Real Madrid. Unfortunately, bad news coming out of the Real Madrid camp today uh, that he has picked up another injury and it looks likely now he'll be out for the rest of the season. Uh, Alex Kirkland joins us. Alex, how, in reality, how hopeful were people of Courtois playing in that game against City? Oh, very much so. Absolutely. That was the expectation because he'd worked so hard to get back. He was back in training, first of all, training individually, then training back with his teammates. And Carlo Ancelotti had been explicit about it when asked about this over the last few days. He said, end of this month, Thibaut Courtois is back, available with his teammates. Now, of course, that doesn't mean match fits, but the expectation was that he would be in contention to play against Manchester City. And it's a huge flow because it's not happening now. It's goodbye to that game. It's goodbye to the tie. It's goodbye to the season, we think, for, for Thibaut Courtois because it's four to six weeks out with this injury. Picked up in training today. He was very affected by this. We're told that he was in tears after it happened as he left as he left training. And it's a blow for, for Real Madrid because this is Courtois. This is, for me, the best goalkeeper in the world. And, of course, the narrative up to this point had been, look, Real Madrid having a really good season, top of La Liga, in the Champions League quarterfinals. And just as we get to the real business end of the season, Courtois is back. Militao is back. We walk La Liga and then let's see what we do in the Champions League. Now, of course, now the Courtois part of that equation is not happening. The only silver lining, I guess you might say, is that Andre Luna surprised absolutely everybody and had yeah. a, an exceptional season, I think, as, as deputy for, for Thibaut Courtois. So that's the good news, but there's no doubt this is a, a blow for Real Madrid. There's not much to add, is there? No. Well, no, but I, I, to think that Thibaut Courtois was going to come in after being out with an ACL injury and was going to have the explosion in his legs and in the spring and going to be able to make that big save that Real Madrid would potentially need against Manchester City would have been unrealistic to begin with. And, and that, I think, is the part that people just kind of get ahead of themselves. There is, there is a difference between being back to training, full training, and then being fit to play at the elite, world-class level of Thibaut Courtois. It's a big leap, and it, it, it doesn't happen overnight. And that's, that's why when there was this conversation about Thibaut Courtois, it's like, look, okay, I understand. He's feeling better. He's getting better. He's going to get back to training. But that doesn't mean that he takes the jump to the elite level uh, after a couple of weeks in training. I, I just never really saw it as a true possibility. While Real Madrid may say it otherwise, and Ancelotti may say otherwise, and Real Madrid fans will say otherwise, I got to tell you, from the perspective of the players, it was a big ass to begin with. Yeah, it was never going to happen. No. No. So, all right, then. OK. Never. Uh, meanwhile, we've been talking since the draws we made about reasons why you would be optimistic if you're a Real Madrid fan going in uh, to this semi uh, quarterfinal against Manchester City. And we were struggling to find too many reasons, given what we've seen from Manchester City, given Real Madrid and the manner of the defeat that we saw last season. Alex saw that very angry mm. with everyone. He's saying, wait a minute, I've given lots of reasons why I feel Real Madrid are legitimate contenders to go through against the semi-finals. I think it's definitely going to happen. Um, I, I feel like you might be not exactly quoting me word for word there, Dan, saying it's How definitely going to That's happen. That's not like you, Dan. <laughs> yeah, there might be a touch of exaggeration there, but I can give you some reasons <laughs> for Real Madrid to be optimistic. Okay, here are some of them. Uh, a guy called Jude Bellingham. Have you heard of him? He's, he's amazing. He you know, joined Real Madrid last summer. His impact has been huge. He makes a difference for this Real Madrid team. Vinicius Jr., I think, is a better, more well-rounded player than he was last season. He's in the form of his life. He's a more versatile attacking player than he, than he has been in the past. I think his form is absolutely crucial. Elsewhere in the team, I think players like Fede Valverde is having an exceptional season, getting better every year. Camavinga is getting better every year. Danny Carvajal is probably having uh, the season of his career in terms of his form. Uh, Antonio Rudiger, by far, having his best season in a Real Madrid shirt to date. He's compensated for the absence of Militao, the absence of, of Alaba. Yes, there are questions. There's questions about who partners Rudiger at the back. Um, there's questions about the form of someone like Rodrigo Gómez, who hasn't been scoring enough goals, who's been key for Real Madrid in the Champions League in the past. There's questions about so having someone like Hosselu to come off the bench as your sort of first choice backup option in attack. And like I say, there's Lunin, who's been great. He's, he's surprised everybody. But is this a goalkeeper who can win you a Champions League? I don't know about that. But I think there are enough reasons there for Real Madrid to be at least optimistic about having a chance against City. Are they definitely going through? No. Are they favourites? Maybe not. But this is Real Madrid and this is the Champions League. Like, we don't want to be ruling them out, I don't think. But I think the problem is, as we've seen every game from Real Madrid this season, 
out of those matches, there aren't many that you saw and you thought, wow, this team is really clicking. This team is really special. This team can really go somewhere this season. They just seem to have huffed and puffed their way to the top of La Liga as opposed to blown away the opposition in doing so. Yeah, and maybe some of their rivals haven't been that great. Maybe that's part of it as well. I think that's fair. Um, best performances this season from Real Madrid, you'd probably think about when Girona went to the Bernabeu and they blew mm -hmm. Girona away. Of course, at that point, Girona were their closest title rivals and, and they just couldn't live with, with Real Madrid. Otherwise, yeah, there have been games where Madrid have been dominated. Think about even games that they've won. Think about the Clasico with Barcelona in Barcelona earlier in the season when Madrid ended up winning that game thanks to two goals from Jude Bellingham. Barcelona were the better team. I think about the Madrid derby. Atletico won the Madrid derby earlier in the season back in back in September, certainly at the Metropolitano. So, yeah, I think, that's, I think that's fair. But I also think this is a Real Madrid team, and it always has been, which gets up for these Champions League games in a way that it doesn't always get up for your weekly kind of get-it-done games in, in La Liga. Um, so I, that's a fair point. They haven't always sparkled this season, Real Madrid. But still, they've been far too good for everybody else in domestically in Spain, at least. In the Champions League, yes, against Leipzig, they struggled. They got a bit lucky, but that sometimes happens with Madrid in the Champions League, I think, against so-called lesser teams. When it comes to serious opposition like City, I think they'll turn up and I think they'll at least give a good account of themselves. That's the question, and that's obviously was the argument last season, Ali. Mm. It's like Real Madrid, when they hear that Champions League anthem, uh -huh. they turn into Superman. Uh -huh. You know, everybody just ups their game completely, yeah. and then obviously <laughs> it, the, it all went wrong. <laughs> For those of you in the podcast, that's not good. <laughs> so... Well, they can still hear the. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just saying. <laughs> they, they didn't see the hand signal either. <laughs> it's hard, isn't it? Well, it, it, it. Even as Alex was trying to make an argument for Alex Real was Madrid, quite a lot. yeah, there was a lot of sort of like, here's a positive, but hey, here's a negative as well, and and, and that's the thing with Real Madrid right now. You you want to make an argument for them based upon the mystique and the history of the club in the, uh, in the tournament, well, so be it. I'm not going to argue that Real Madrid has something different in Champions League and indeed offers something different in Champions League. Not going to argue that at all. But here's the thing, quite frankly. You are playing with two center backs that would be second choice center back, right? That, I, I think that's a fair point to make. A goalkeeper who would be second choice goalkeeper and at one point was third choice goalkeeper in Andre Luni. Fran Garcia and Ferlan Mendy, it's a toss-up of who is better or worse on the day. Mm -hmm. yeah? So now I've already given you three out of four positions in the back line and the goalkeeper as potentially big question marks. And then who's going to score the goals? Because that's a question mark as well. See, Karim Benzema was available last season when they played against Manchester City. We can agree that he's elite, that he's world-class. Nah, yeah, Jose Luis is not that guy. Serviceable, but not that guy. Vinny Jr. then has to take on some of that responsibility. And, of course, Jude Bellingham. We're asking a lot of players to do a whole lot more than what is required from them on a weekly basis and to do it against Manchester City, who we consider to be the best team in the world. When you put all those things together, it's hard to make an argument for Real Madrid. Uh, 